racial tensions on one university campus reaching a boiling point. Race has always been a threat in the social fabric of America. Shocking video. The latest surgeons. example of Hell, recently sparking a lot of conversations on the very painful issue of race in America. White student called police on a black graduate student. Video surfaced members using a racist chant. I don't like it. Video of a woman being berated. You are committing hate speech against me. Today, technology has given voice to the voice list. They are here to kill us because we are black. Caught on camera, no doubt. But the national conversations we have about race too often end when the camera stops. How did we get here? Is this the America we've always been in, or is this a new America? Justin Simeon is exploring that conversation. Action. One that shines light on black identity through the lens of a Netflix series he created called Dear White People. The series is set on a predominantly white Ivy League college campus. How did we get here? Who hurt you? Well, 200 years Slavery, got it right. Sorry I asked. Winchester is a standard for America. The show unpacks big and sometimes provocative themes, like racial bias in law enforcement. I'm going to need to see your ID. Why do you need to see my ID? Son, I said ID. I'm not your son. Sexual orientation. Sexuality is a spectrum. White privilege and interracial relationships. Don't fall in love with your oppressor. The title is a misnomer. It's called Dear White People, but it's really about being black. And it's really about the fact that blackness sometimes feels like a constant response to white people. Like you're always having to explain yourself. Look at my African-American over here. Look at him. One of the big things that changed between season one and season two is the election of Donald Trump. Mm -hmm. How has that impacted the conversation? I think for me, it's made the series a bit more urgent. Not because these issues are brand new to us, but I think now folks are urgently trying to figure out, well, what happened? And black folks are like, well, actually, we've been bringing this up for some time. <laughs> <laughs> now that you're all ears, uh, let's talk about it. Sam White, played by Logan Browning, is one of the show's main characters. What are you? Part provocateur, she wields her influence so through her on-campus radio show. Dear white people, here's a little tip. When you ask someone who looks ethnically different, what are you? The answer is usually a person about to slap the shit out of you. At the surface, she's a biracial woman who wants to give voice to the people on campus who aren't heard as much. We pay tuition to the police! Speaking her truth is a path towards progress as she sees it. I mean, I was just pretty enough. At first, the character Coco Connors, played by Antoinette Robertson, seems to be at odds with Sam. People take one look at my skin and they assume that I'm poor or uneducated or ratchet. So yeah, I tone it down, make myself more palatable, join a sorority. What's so wrong with that? Everything. Coco believes that infiltrating the system is the best way to go about getting change, not raging against the machine, but finding a way to find success within a world of whiteness. So you'll admit the same number of them and the acceptance rate goes down and that's something to brag about. And I do enjoy bragging. She's very much so aware of the world and how it perceives women of color. Nobody is sort of presented to you in just one way. At times, the show holding a mirror that exposes the divides and complexities that exist within the black community. You get away with murder because you look more like them than I do. That's your light skin privilege. Sam's character becomes even more complicated when we learn she's dating her white teaching assistant, Gabe Mitchell. I want to be more than just a hot lay for you, Sam. He'll never understand what it's like to be in her shoes, but he really wants to understand. And I think Sam sees that in him and knows that it's genuine. Well, sh Sam, if I knew you liked them light, I would have hollered. Sam's character helped me understand this relationship she has with a white boyfriend and how it's viewed by some as kind of a, a shot at her blackness, right? Yeah. I mean, this is so common. Somebody who is prominent in the black community is outspoken as an activist. You find out they have a white wife or a white husband. Ah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Are you watching me sleep? Their relationship explores the delicate dance that can be interracial dating. 
<laughs> this sort of construct of race really just gets in between us being human beings and communicating with each other. Who are you to tell me what I should do? If you were really interested in reaching people, maybe you let them in. They get to a point where they become really, truly broken down, honest and vulnerable with each other. You wouldn't hide behind this veil of anger. It's only a small part of who you are. I didn't hear a question there. I'm just saying. What I heard was a reprimand about how I should process my experience. But they're also having a conversation about whiteness and blackness in general. I'm black. In this society, that is what I am, period. The conversation between Sam and Gabe is almost like the conversation I feel like we all want to just have, but we're on Twitter or we're on Facebook. You can't just run away from the conversation because you don't like where it's going. This is what this conversation could be if we learn to stay in the room together long enough to hear each other. I miss you. It's hard not to learn a little bit about yourself when you're yes. having these kinds of conversations. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it really punches you in the face. Are you a student here? Art mimicking life. What? We've had some complaints. Are you a student here? Yeah, is a reoccurring theme on the show. Thanks. Are you a Yale student? Of course I'm a Yale student. How else would I, I get in know. here? Our national conversation is bombarded by disturbing images of encounters between black people and the police. I go to UVA! Why you need to see my ID? Son, I said ID. I'm not your son. This scene in season one depicts a campus security officer drawing a gun on Reggie. I said show me some ID! A black student after the cops were called to come fight at a party. Show me some ID! Black comes at you real fast sometimes, and Reggie is literally having a near-death experience over being at a party and doing the same things that everybody else is doing. Every time I see a video of a kid that looks just like me, which is at the wrong place at the wrong time, being brutally murdered or uh, taken into custody, that is traumatic. That's traumatic to me. Just felt like we had a responsibility to speak to that. Unpack that, the, the, the intensity of, the, of that moment. It's still with me, actually, because when I read the script, um, you know, it didn't hit me until like hours later and I just, you know, cried. Are you okay, you bitch? Reggie's narrative explores the collateral damage of that moment and how trauma often lingers long after the headlines disappear. Even with the happy ending of Reggie not dying that night, still comes with a lot of consequences, comes with a lot of wounds. I'm having panic attacks and I mean, it's not like the dude shot me. No, and, don't do that. No, the worst thing we can do is normalize this stuff. In most television shows, right. When something like that happens, we're done. We might reference it a couple times in the dialogue, but we're done. But for black folks, we're, we're experiencing PTSD. Justin makes that a point by revisiting Reggie's pain throughout the series. Why are you here? So I won't be labeled the angry black man. I think part of why mental health is a taboo in the black community is because we're all kind of in survival mode. We've been in survival mode for generations now. We don't realize that we're not fine. You cannot. Let those few seconds become your whole life. Using the pen to push for progress, the team behind Dear White People believe that lifting up a truth, a shared experience, can lead to a more empathetic society. Something Justin said to me before we even started filming the show is that playing this character is, is, might change somebody's life or save somebody's life. I'm grateful that we're on a show that can allow kids or whoever to really have a place to kind of explore different views or feel like they can attach to a character or feel like they can look up to a character. I feel like a lot of our characters are very aspirational. The fact that I have the opportunity to say something and tell people what I'm going through is not lost on me. I feel like I have to say something in my work. For Nightline, I'm Zachary Keish in Los Angeles. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.